Sí. Great. I'm, um, I'm Nancy Keenan, president of NARAW Pro-Choice America, and I want to thank Eric and Media Matters and, um, and my esteemed colleagues here. They all do great work, and all of it's so very important. Let me just start with Dr. George Tiller's murder. Uh, ranked, it ranked as the second highest uh, story on cable news for the first week of June, and that's according to the Pew Center. It was by far the most reported story on the threats to choice that we've seen in many, many years. Um, contrary to the posturing of many of the anti-choice people, Dr. Tiller's murder was not an isolated event. It is a pattern, and it's a pattern of hateful and inflammatory rhetoric that can lead to violence by some of the most extreme members of the anti-choice movement. And let's just take a look at a few examples here. Jill Stanek. Um, a notorious anti-choice blogger, and she told Newsweek the, the, uh, after President Obama won the presidential race, she said, he's got the House, he's got the Senate, so I think we go more guerrilla warfare or go back to working harder on your turf. Stanek even sunk to even new lows after Dr. Tiller's murder when she published the names and the locations of two providers who can offer similar services as Dr. Tiller. Publish them. Now, you may have heard or seen Jill Stanek because she's been a guest on many right-wing shows, including The O'Reilly Factor on Fox. And you knew sooner or later we would get to O'Reilly. O'Reilly's response to Dr. Tiller's mur murder is part deniability, it is part distraction, and it is part defiance and all of them are outrageous. He ran a concerted on-air attack um, and campaign targeting Dr. Tiller's, uh, complete with the inflammatory rhetoric like baby killer, time and time again. And after Dr. Tiller's murder, O'Reilly denied. He denied his role in that rhetoric. And then he tried to distract from the video footage of his using this rhetoric by claiming that it was others, others, were trying to score political points by attacking him. Now, Mr. Riley should understand that fact-checking is not an attack. Fact-checking is not an attack. But you can't ignore also that what we've seen recently, and that is his defiance. And he displayed it um, when the evidence proved him wrong. He shows no change, no signs of changing his rhetoric, and he shows no sense of wanting to accept responsibility for what he has said over these many, many uh, shows. I think there's a lesson here, and the lesson is that history has shown us that when rhetoric rises to that extreme level, it gives license to the fringe element to act violently. This is not new. History has proven this one out. Now, we talked a little bit about the 1990s, and people often ask me what are the sim similarities between what we're seeing now and the violence directed at abortion providers and their patients in the 1990s. Um, yeah, the emergence of uh, Bill O'Reilly um, is part of the equation, but so is the social networking and the social media. For every side that there's an up, there's a down. And let me just say that this social media allowed us, as an organization, to connect millions, hundreds of thousands of people uh, and our members to attend 50 vigils in 24 states in memory of Dr. Tiller. An upside. The same time, the flip side, sometimes not so good. And it makes today's landscape a little bit different than in the 1990s. So the, the name of the man that was charged with Dr. Tiller's murder was reported to have been and anti-choice blogs. And what's happening out there is a creation of an isolated community that lives within the echo chamber of right-wing talk shows and blogs like Jill Stanek's. It gives them much, much faster access to inflammatory videos. They can post that, those videos, and it validates back and forth. It's validating their extreme views. So there's not a check and balance, and there's no fact-checking different in this new media that we're living in. And even though anti-choice groups have used the media to disassociate themselves with Dr. Tiller's murder, they absolutely show no sign 
of changing their tactics of bullying and intimidation. Uh, you're all familiar with the notorious Operation Rescue. Well, it has plans to hold protests outside the building of one of the two remaining doctors that are able to help women who would have gone to Dr. Tiller. And the leader of that group just this week used again that inflammatory language by saying that all abortionists murder children. And when making a comparison, he was making the comparison between Dr. Tiller's murder and other acts of violence. Let me not just end on the downside of this, although we're all fully aware of what that rhetoric incites. But I want to be on a more positive example in the news business. And that was giving credit where credit is due with Rachel Maddow on MSNBC, who continues to devote significant time to thoughtful coverage of how Dr. Tiller's murder is part of a much, much broader attempt to block women's access to safe and legal abortion. And for many Americans, mainly those too young to remember what happened in the 1990s, Maddow's program, I think, has provided tremendous public service and should serve as a guide, I believe, for other programs. That in-depth coverage, the painting of the picture of really what is happening on the ground across this country. Thank you.